This is the latest in hi-fi from the States. A stereo radio that you can feel. You wear it like this, round the neck, controls at each end, there and there. Now, apart from its curious design, the remarkable aspect of this radio are two tiny speakers. There's one there and one over here. You can see one of them if I just pull back the cover. A little bit awkward, this, but uh, there it is. And what's different about them is that, ah, there it is. What's different about them is that where an ordinary loudspeaker vibrates air so that we can hear the sound, these have been designed so that you can feel that vibration as well. And because it's a personal thing, I'm afraid I can't really play it to you. Which, I'm afraid, goes for this other device too. This is the latest from Japan, which the makers say is the smallest stereo cassette player in the world. And that's a pity, because the quality is quite superb. A pity, at least, that I can't play it to you. However, I can show you the difference between the noise through these headphones and the noise through an ordinary set. Because one thing that really makes this machine sound so good is the sensitivity of these tiny headphones. Well, to illustrate that sensitivity, I'm going to need this machine here. It's a frequency analyzer, which shows high frequencies over on this side and low frequencies over at the other. And here we've got roughly the same amounts of each. In other words, as much top as there is bass. And that equal balance of sound is known in the trade as pink noise. In this case, the sound is coming from a signal generator. Now, what we're going to do is to play that pink noise into a pair of ordinary headphones, which this gentleman is listening to. Because behind this impassive face are a pair of microphones. And they'll allow us to measure just how well those headphones relay pink noise back to our screen. So let's have a look now at the results. Well, there's quite a difference on the screen over here because you can see we've lost quite a bit of high frequency stuff over here and we've lost also a good deal of bass over there as well. It leaves us with, well, very roughly, a curve like that. But let's have a look what the new lightweight headphones look like. Let's slide them on. And have a look at the results. And now there's a tremendous change, because apart from the difference in level, and that shows a much greater sensitivity, we've also got much more of the high frequency noises which we lost out on on the last time, and we've also got a good deal more bass over there as well. OK, so why is that happening? Well, the guts of any conventional pair of headphones, or for that matter any loudspeaker, is a magnet. And in these headphones, the magnet is about that size. It's made of a mix of iron, aluminium and cobalt. But inside these rather special cans, we've got a magnet just that size. You can see how much smaller it is when I put the other one there. Whoops. You can see how much smaller it is when I take this other one away. Now, this smaller magnet is made of a mixture of cobalt and a rare element called samarium. But surprisingly enough, although it's smaller, it's also much more powerful. Over here, we've got a chunk of metal, and I'll put the larger magnet onto it. You can see it does attract, but it's certainly not strong enough to lift it up. But watch what happens with the samarium cobalt magnet. I put a little screw on there, by the way, to make it easier to grip. There's no cheating here. Put it on and it lifts it up with no bother at all. Well, they haven't just put that sort of magnet in the headphones, it's also in the electric motor in the player itself, and the combination produces a very good sound indeed. I'm very sorry we can't play the difference in sound to you, but at least our bionic man seems to be enjoying it.